Okay, um, thanks for coming. We're going to talk about Tableau in the manufacturing environment. Uh, I'm Rich. We'll talk to Dave a little later. So I'm the I'm the money and strategy guy. Dave's the doer guy. So the technical stuff you have to ask Dave. But uh, what I'm going to do is kind of talk to you about how we got Tableau uh, adopted in our environment and. Uh, you know, some kind of things that uh, I've learned along my career as a CIO uh, for driving adoption and, and frankly making an impact. So we make steel. We're a hardcore steel company. Uh, we're based out of Moscow, uh, 15 billion in revenue. You can see we're, I'm, I run uh, IT for North America. You can see Russia's a big country. And uh, so we got a lot of steel making there. Uh, we got some mines down in South Africa. So a pretty interesting company and, and pretty cool actually because we, we, we make our own raw material, we get it out of the mines, we melt cars, right? So we make our own steel, we make it into uh, intermediary product and then we make finished products. So very self-sufficient and uh, you know, that's good in a global economy not to really have to depend on anybody else for your raw materials. This is ever as North America. Uh, got to have a winter coat on this job. A lot of mills in Canada and uh, 50 below zero uh, earlier uh, last year. But uh, 4,500 employees, we've got six steel mills, um, 5 million tons of steel annually. Uh, I spend most of my time uh, in the field and I think if you want to sell uh, and drive change, uh, you can't sit in corporate, especially if you're in the manufacturing industry. So I uh, do a lot of travel. I'm out in Pueblo and Portland quite often, and uh, Regina is kind of a jumping off spot for Calgary and the other sites. We make tubular, flat, and long products. I'll explain that a little bit more. Uh, we're the largest producer of rail, which is, a, is, is great because we're not, there's not many rail companies in the U.S. And uh, uh, oil country tubular goods uh, in Canada, which is basically pipe for the uh, gas and oil industry. A lot of people don't know it, but there's a, uh, uh, an oil and gas revolution going on. I mean, that industry is drilling like crazy. So we're well positioned. Uh, how do you do that? This one? Is that better? Better? So, uh, so we're well positioned and we're obviously pretty busy today. A little bit more about our product portfolio. So, uh, Portland and Regina, pretty much uh, flat products, uh, bridges, armor plate. Uh, you know, you walk around the city here, for sure our steel's in these buildings. Okay, especially with the mill we have in Portland. Uh, rail car, shipbuilding, et cetera. Tubular products, I mentioned that a little bit. Uh, oil and gas exploration and transmission. You kind of see, you know, basically we make everything from uh, two inch to, to 48 inch pipe. And then long products, uh, rail and rebar is basically what, what, what is entailed there. Uh, we also do on occasions make the actual wheels for rail cars. Uh, in fact, last year we were making uh, wheels for Russia, uh, Russian rail cars. And uh, again, uh, it's not sexy, but it's, it's a really good industry. And uh, although, for me, I actually worked in Silicon Valley when I was younger. This seems like it's not very high tech. Making steel is actually very difficult and there's a lot of technology and anybody that's familiar with it would know that. Okay, uh, couldn't, couldn't have a presentation about the steel industry and not talk about safety. So safety is number one, pretty proud of our record. Uh, uh, second only to quality. So. We always like to have a safety moment in all our meetings. So give you two uh, important tips here. So number one, cause an accidental death at home. Does anybody know? Falls. So uh, ladders, roofs. Uh, so be careful out there if you're up there. And number two, poisoning. So if you've got young children or pets, uh, keep your cleaning materials and such locked up. So you'd be surprised how many deaths there are each year by those two items. Uh, and quality, so you'll see today, uh, Dave's gonna show you uh, some dashboards around quality and how we've uh, adopted Tableau in that space. 
And lastly, before I get into Tableau, just a little bit about the key areas. Again, this is kind of where my travels take me. So Regina, uh, we actually have an R&D uh, lab out there. And uh, ag again, we're kind of self-contained. So they're making everything from the coil itself or the flat steel into the pipe. A play blow is primarily uh, next generation rail. Uh, and as you can imagine in some of these products, uh, you know, like with pipe, for example, you know, if it fails and it's, you know, 2,000 feet in the ground in an oil well, it's a big problem. And obviously rail. So there is a lot of uh, requirements on quality from our customers. Uh, and obviously, you know, that makes uh, the type of steel we make, you know, very specialized. Portland actually makes all kinds of different types. I would say it has the most variability of steel, uh, changing the strength and different things with different alloys in that, a lot of chemistry in that. Uh, you know, the armor business has been pretty good the last few years for us. And uh, we also, uh, again, that's another site where we also make uh, flat steel and pipe. Okay, so I've been here about 16 months as CIO. So when you come in, what do you want to do, right? You want to make an impact. And uh, you want to do it quickly. Now, let's face it, when you're in manufacturing and you're the new guy at corporate headquarters and you go out to the mills, uh, you know, you got a little bit of trust to build, right? Uh, and so the first thing I did is I traveled out to the mills and I asked, you know, I saw what they were doing and what we found was that, I, as, and I think this is pretty typical in manufacturing, uh, people are, are doing everything on spreadsheets. Now, Everage is a fairly, fairly young com, com, uh, company in North America through acquisitions. So if you look on the right there, you see our heat map of applications. You can see everybody's got different applications. So, of course, how do people report on data? Well, they're pulling it from different data sources. They're putting it in Excel spreadsheets. And then, of course, they're using different data sources depending on which location they're in. So, you know, you get in a meeting with the CFO. Everybody's got their spreadsheets. And their numbers are right. The other guy's numbers are wrong. So, I mean, honestly, a prime opportunity for, for fixing what I call information starvation. So, my philosophy is to drive change from the bottom up as well as the top down, all right? Uh, I have found in manufacturing the best way to drive change is to get out in the mill or your plant and, and talk to the people out there, find out what their problems are. In most cases, they're receptive to help uh, if you can bring something to the table, all right? So that's basically what we did to, to drive this change. So what were our, our challenges there? Uh, you know, we were not nimble. When someone asked us to do a report, it took days or weeks, all right? Pretty frustrating. One of the things I heard over and over again from the business was, man, you guys are slow. You know, what takes so long? Well, you saw that prior slide with all those different systems. It takes some time because everything's got to be written manually. It's no reuse of anything. So, you know, if I wrote a report which had similar data, you know, for one business person, you know, I'm going to rewrite it for the next one, right? So, you know, typical lack of, of reuse of our development. And uh, the business actually had gotten so uh, dismayed with our speed that they got their own staffs uh, on board to do their own reporting. Now, it still took them a really long time, but every mill had their own people and their full-time job was writing reports for the mill. Okay, so a good, good environment for some new technology, right? Um, so what do we do is we talk to those people and we engage what I call the power users. Now, I talked a little bit earlier about you know, driving it from the bottom up. So I have brought in you know, several what I would call, quote, disruptive technologies, right? Splunk's a good example of another one, right? You can't force people to buy into that. You can't, you know, I don't believe you can take a, a, a product uh, or a solution and say, hey, you know, this is the way you need to do stuff, so get on board, right? That's pretty, 1970s, 1980s, you know, IT thinking. So you got to get the, the business people to drive the change. And you also want, you know, them to basically tell people, you know, hey, we got some good stuff happening here. So that's what we did. We got a group of power users. You know, we talked to some people. They weren't interested. That's fine. Okay. But let's get the people that were interested. So we, talk, we got a group of power users. We sent them to training, right? We, you know, we brought in uh, our account guy from Tableau. Uh, we said, hey, you know, you know, give a presentation to the business, explain to them what we're doing, and try, kind of you know, drive some excitement and some interest. Built our power uh, user group, and then we sent them to training. 
all right? Uh, it was online, but I mean, but we paid for it all, you know, we funded it all, and uh, we kind of, you know, helped them get jump started, if you will. Um, we did some proof of concepts, right? We started off with, you know, we had some early adopters. There were some people that were more tech savvy, and so they really wanted to get their hands in there. So we did that with the shop floor and with sales, okay? So kind of neat because we had both shop floor, so operationally we're already in the mills, right? They're already using it. Then, of course, sales more of a corporate function. Uh, but, uh, you know, so, you know, providing that visibility but both from a leadership perspective as well as from an operational perspective. Talked about the training, but we also gave them consulting. When people got stuck, okay, we gave them some help, all right? Um, we also did a proof of concept, and that actually was uh, very telling in driving the adoption. So we took a group that already had their own way of doing things. You know, we're, we're programmers, so what we do, we write reports. It takes two or three days or a week, but we like doing it. We've been doing it for 25 years, and no reason to change. But we, we asked them to try this technology. And uh, it was interesting, because initially they were like, eh, I don't think this is as good as I thought it was, or, you know, they, they got a little stuck, but they pushed on to their credit. They pushed on, it took them about four hours to do their first report, with no training, by the way. And, you know, just downloading the free uh, uh, version you can download online. And, uh, but they knew that same report would take them two days. So they were, they were on board. We actually then had a Tableau consultant uh, do, a little, do the same thing, and they actually did it online in 45 minutes. Of course, they knew the tool, right? They went through training. So anyways, now we had, you know, people were engaged, right? So we, you know, we continued with that process. We kept driving, uh, you know, communication out to the field, you know, that, you know, we're here to help. And actually now we're, we're saturated. We can't keep up with the demand, which is a good problem to have, right? So how do we build the momentum? And the reports up there, you'll, Dave will go into those and more. But so executive reporting. So what's really neat today is every day automated executive reports come out that they're running the business on. They're very simple. You know, I was in a, a, a I think his name's Jeff Giles from Tableau, which just did a thing on sales and Salesforce if you were in that session. But it's a single dashboard. That's what we have. Single dashboard, way top at the right. You can't see the data, obviously, but, you know, uh, you know, how much raw material we have, you know, how much are we making, uh, how much are we shipping, are we hitting our EBITDA, et cetera. So that's all automated now. Uh, lean initiatives, so of course we're manufacturing. So we had to get engaged with the lean team, right, to start using our tools. And they were a little skeptical, but uh, we actually did, and Dave will talk about this, a. Uh, a dashboard for the uh, the ladles that mix our, our molten steel. And obviously, there's actually, people don't realize there's a ton of chemistry in making steel. And if you're not mixing your stuff properly, you don't have a, uh, a consistent uh, recipe, and that can cause some problems with your quality. So that was, once, once when that was done, the lean team was on board. Um, monthly Tableau user meetings. So don't let people out there hang the dry, you know, don't hang them out there to dry. I actually do this for everything. I do it for my ERP, I do it for my finance, I do it for all my application portfolio, right? Now you don't have to show up if you don't want to, right? But we try to help people and give them a monthly place to go and ask their questions uh, so they feel that, you know, we're more, you know, IT is a service organization. Well, that's a service we're providing. So we have a monthly Tableau users meeting. Uh, I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we, well, we all, I didn't mention we also work with the supply chain. So the supply chain is key, you know, within, you know, any manufacturing uh, company. And uh, they didn't really have very good tools. They were doing a lot of stuff with spreadsheets. So we did a lot of work to help them automate things. So between supply chain, shop floor, and uh, quality dashboards, and again, Dave will talk to you about that, um, we really got some great momentum. And honestly, like I said, today, you know, we're telling people, well, wait a minute, I, got, you know, I don't have any more resources, you've got to you know, step back a bit. So we're, and we're, we're trying to do is train them, but you know, honestly the users are still a little like, hey, can you help me out? Well, so we're, we're trying to balance that. Our goal is honestly, this is a user tool, right? You, we'll give you access to your data, you should create your own reports. We're not quite there yet, but uh, you know, we're, we're, off, we're, off the, we're off and running. 
Uh, and then bottom-up and top-down visibility. So again, that senior leadership view as well as the shop floor view. Uh, you know, when our CEO goes out into the mill, uh, it's great when they're talking to people on the shop floor and they're talking about a new dashboard that they're using, you know, that we help them create. So, so that's kind of our journey. Uh, I mean, that's how we got there. So I'm going to turn it over to Dave. Uh, Dave's a doer guy. I said I'm the money and strategy guy. So he'll tell you how he did it and he can answer your questions on, uh, on the specifics. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Thanks, Rich. So, uh, yeah, Rich is a smart guy, and I am a doer. And, uh, uh oh, is yours still on? Mine's off, but I think yours is a little loud. Is that better now? I got the, I hear a buzz. All right, I'll stand over here. Okay. Um, except I got to do this. Uh, so he brought me in, um, and Rich knows a lot about a lot, but. BI is not really his, his forte, so he brought me in. I've been doing this a long time. And uh, he brought Tableau in to help get tools in the, in the user's hands where they can solve problems. But um, what I didn't want to do was, was actually just create another environment where instead of having a lot of different Excel reports and reports that people cobbled together and brought to meetings, they're all different. I didn't want Tableau to become a better tool to do the same thing and see fancy charts that don't mesh with each other if someone else built them, right? So um, I'm going to walk you a little through kind of a current state when I came on board, um, what the reporting process is like, and then also kind of our future state, because our goal is to solve problems now, but build towards an architecture that makes it even easier down the road for business users to uh, be self-sufficient. And you know, by that, meaning that we focus on getting your data in order and easy to use, and navigate so they can put any tool on top of it, especially Tableau, and um, quickly solve their own problems. So I like to call our existing day kind of a non-architecture when I came in. And basically we have you know, a lot of plants in different locations, a lot of different systems. You have production systems, you have quality systems, you have you know, uh, financial systems, um, and a lot of them aren't really integrated. So you know, in Canada they have different general ledger systems they do in, in Portland and things like that. We also had um, what we call data warehouses, but they really weren't because um, they weren't integrated to so quality production, financials, were in different data, data warehouses. Um, there was a Canadian warehouse, um, and I, you saw, I'm showing them as like bites taken out because none of them were really holistic, and so we didn't have a complete view of Evraz anywhere. Um, and then to get information out, we had uh, people pulling stuff you know, directly into Excel, Excel, doing dumps, or we had out of some of the warehouses, we had a bunch of Fox Pro applications where people would basically um, do data dumps so they could select from 100 different attributes and run a report and extract. They pull it into Excel, and then guess what? They're going to combine it with extracts from other systems in Excel, start doing V lookups and stuff like that, and basically they're doing a lot of work in Excel. Um, so that's where we were. And if you think about uh, the effort in, Rich, Rich mentioned earlier how users were saying, you know, God, it takes two, three, four weeks to get, build a report. Um, you know, it's not all that unique because a lot of the time when someone wants a report, the report itself is easy to build. It's getting the data in order. So the way it worked at Evraz, uh, this chart basically shows um, kind of the work to get to a, an actual report. And the way it was before, it was all done in Excel. So you got your extracts into Excel spreadsheets. And then you started to do things like conform your data. So I want the same date format for all my date fields. Um, I want to you know, build in some hierarchies or clean up some data where different systems name, you know, call Portland, Portland, Oregon, or you know, just Portland or whatever. So you, you want to start to clean your data. And then you start building your calculations. And it's all done in Excel. It takes a long time. And really, the only stuff that's reusable is that extract, right? Because everything in Excel, you have to redo every time you have a new, new workbook. Um, so our goal is really to automate everything below the report. So it starts to get data flowing into a common warehouse, automated and integrated, so that business users can focus on easily accessing data and then building a report. And so that, you know, theoretically, as we get our data integrated, 
the time to build a new report goes from you know two or three weeks to two or three hours. And if you have questions, feel free to interrupt me. If I'm going to cover it later, I'll just uh, let you know. So our future state um, is really ultimately to get to a single um, enterprise data warehouse uh, with maybe a virtual layer on top of middleware uh, because we also are um, using a lot of uh, hosted applications like host analytics for um, financial planning and Salesforce and Carrier Point, which is our transportation system. Um, but ultimately, um, and we, we're going to start doing more with big data around sensor data and things like that. Ultimately, we want to get to a point where we have a common view of our, our data across systems. And then you can put any tool on top of that, that virtual layer, be it Tableau, be it SSRS, or any uh, tool, because no, no tool really does everything we need, right? So Tableau is really good at visual analysis and uh, dashboarding. You know, if you want to do a very highly formatted report and send it out to a bunch of people through email, it's maybe not the best tool, right? So that's why um, this is our, our, end, our end vision. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how we are trying to get from where we are to this end vision, but at the same time, solve problems. Okay. And so this is our approach to becoming awesome with data. It's not a pretty slide, but um, I think uh, it summarizes it. I mean, our goal is not to let perfection be the enemy of, of good enough. And so our goal, I measure myself, is am I better now than I was three months ago? And I don't have to be perfect, but just better, right? And if we're always better in five or six years, we're going to be pretty, pretty darn good. Um, so from a data perspective, um, how do we balance that short-term goal with a long-term vision? So in the short term, as we build out our enterprise warehouse and our virtual layer, our goal is to report against data that's already in place. So when I came into Everaz a year ago, a little over a year ago, um, I'll be honest, it's probably one of the more challenging data environments I've, I've worked in in terms of the disparity of data and the quality of data. And, uh, but at the same time, we have a lot of data. So no one says, hey, I don't have enough information. It's just really, really hard to get to. So in the short term, our goal is to report against data in place by putting tools like Tableau on it. So if people want to look at inventory, you know, we'll give them Tableau, we'll start building out dashboards and analyses around inventory data, while in parallel, we're starting to populate our inventory uh, subject here in a data mart, in a data warehouse. And then once that's finished, you know, we rewrite the data sources, and now we're sourcing from one place. And then over time, as we start to bring in, um, you know, sales data and um, shipments and invoices and things like that, we start to integrate it um, all into one place. So as we go forward, you know, you're pointing to one place with integrated data versus, you know, five or six different sources for the same report. Um, so the goal is always to, you know, take advantage of what's there um, as we build out towards the, the long term. From a master data management perspective, so we don't have any kind of master data management processes or governance in place right now. So our goal in the short term is to um, as much expose issues as anything else. So we brought, as an example, we've brought inventory into our warehouse uh, from, um, I don't know, 10 or 10 different systems. And products are named differently in different systems. So if I want to see a single view of a single product, it's not easy to do because we don't have this mapping of saying these three products are the same, you know, they're, they're in different systems. So as we build out uh, the warehouse, what we're doing is we're starting to build reports saying, hey, we have three products that are probably the same, and we're identifying, you know, what source they came from. And now the business users are working with us say, hey, these things should be these products, or these grades are the same, or this location is actually the same location, and we're cleaning up our data as we go. So our first goal is really to expose issues as we establish governance processes. And next year, we're going to spend a lot of time and money on uh, bringing master data management tools and, and getting those processes solidified so the business users can own the uh, management of it. Same thing with data quality. Um, right now, because data is in all these different systems, not all the quality issues get exposed. So as we um, start to put tools like Tableau on, we can start to see where are, where are things that don't match up or don't conform and things like that. And then. Uh, short term with the reporting, we're using Tableau, SSRS, and uh, actually SQL Server Analysis Services. I'm not sure if in the long term we'll probably uh, 
refine this. Tableau is always going to be a key component in terms of um, power users and ad hoc analysis and uh, very graphical analysis because it's, you know, it's really, really good at that. So that's where we are. I think I'm gonna, in my last slide, we'll start talking about uh, one more slide. So how do we go from here to um, our, our perfect state? And really, Tableau is a big part of it. And I think I kind of talked through this, but basically, we're putting Tableau on our existing data sources so that we start to build out these extracts, um, leveraging the data in place. And then over time, as we build out a warehouse, we'll rewrite the extracts to uh, source from a, a common data warehouse and things like that. So, all right, now I'm going to talk about some of the stuff we're doing. So, first, I'll talk about quality dashboards. Quality is a key, a key thing for us because uh, you know, there's a cost if you, if you don't ship a you know, good product, right? And uh, the further, it's like a project management, right? The sooner you find a defect, the better it is, right? The cheaper it is. If something gets in the ground and it's defective, there's a big cost to it. So we want to be very proactive in preventing defects and ensure that everything goes out the door is very high quality. Um, but again, it goes across a lot of systems. And if you think about what we build, uh, Rich mentioned earlier, we're fully vertically integrated. So that means we produce the ore, we mine it, we melt uh, steel from scrap, we produce, um, we melt it, and then we produce what's called slabs. And slabs go into coils, and coils go into pipe. And those are all different mills, some of them at different locations. It's all separate data. So our production data is not all integrated. At the same time, we're also testing throughout the process, and those are all different testing systems. So to get to a single view of our, our quality, it's not, not that easy, right? So that's what um, one of the first projects we tackled with quality was to start addressing that. And so um, I can't, I'm actually not going to show any applications because uh, our marketing legal department is very sensitive about what we share. This is our, you know, kind of key applications for us. So, uh, but basically, we've put together um, a high-level uh, dashboard, a series of dashboards. This one's just showing basically key metrics across a, a slew of um, operational processes. So it's going to show us, you know, how many how many slabs did you produce? How many met the specifications? How many pipe did you produce? How many met specifications? Uh, things like that. Uh, at the end of the day, we really want to know is, you know, is this product ready to ship? And part of what we're also doing, which I don't have up here, is we're tying this stuff all together so I can start to look at a pipe that's produced and understand if it's defective. And then if it's defective, I want to be able to say, okay, this pipe's defective. What coil did it come from? And were there other defects off that coil? If not, I want to, you know, then I want to look at the slab and basically work my way all the way through the process, start to identify where issues are. And then if we start to see a commonality, maybe we have to adjust our, our specifications. So for example, if we start to get you know, defects where our, our chemical mix is on the edges of our parameters, maybe we tighten our parameters for testing purposes going forward to prevent defects down the road. Any questions? So the other area we're using uh, Tableau right now is for management operations dashboards. This is for one of our, uh, our flat group. And basically, they get a report every day that um, they manage your business by. And if you work for the head of that product group, you better have looked at this report before he did because he looks at it every day. And if he sees something, you're guaranteed you're going to get a question about it. So people look at this report every day. It gets shipped out uh, via email. We generate a PDF using a tab command and email it out. And basically, it shows what we call a, a theory of constraints. And each of these rows of charts represent uh, one stage of the manufacturing process. So this starts to show us, you know, how much inventory do we have at each stage? And do I have enough um, slabs in the work to meet the demand to produce the coils that I need to produce the pipes that we have orders for? And so they can quickly look at this sheet and very visually understand, oh, I have a gap here. I need to maybe, you know, source some uh, external slabs because we're not going to produce enough ourselves and things like that. So this is uh, looked at every single day, and it's very uh, key to the business now. So. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about production monitoring. This is the group that uh, Rich had mentioned earlier. And these guys put together um, a couple reports that basically get run throughout the day and published throughout Everaz. So they get published through screens on the, on the 
shop floor. If you go to the headquarters, the main office, there's a monitor up there that shows these reports. And what they are is they're really meant to focus on specific uh, areas where you really want to um, ensure quality. And the top one is a ladle report, and that's basically, it shows, uh, ladle is, is a big, basically like bucket where we, you pour the, the melted steel into and you mix it together and then that comes out of there and it goes into uh, the molds and, and the slabs get rolled. Um, so this basically lets them visually see very quickly how well I'm doing in terms of mixing my ladle. So each of those circles represents one heat, which is like one bucket that goes into the ladle and then uh, each row represents one ladle and they can see over time, you know, Green, obviously, on top and bottom means we've, we've mixed it really well. And if it's red, it means we need, we need to do a better job of mixing it. So people can see this every day, and it, it's uh, you know, very graphical and easy for people to understand the impact. Uh, the pond level reports. So pond is basically what it sounds like. It's a pond. It's a retention pond, a reservoir that we use the water to um, cool throughout our, our manufacturing processes. So we need to make sure we have enough water to make sure we can cool the um, metal so that we can keep producing. And at the same time, we don't want too much because if there's overflow, then there's an environmental impact and that's another big cost to us. So we, this basically shows us how we, we in the range of our um, low and high levels. And if we're starting to verge on being too high, we can bring someone in and they, they pump out the water and take it away in trucks or we can bring more water in just to make sure we don't ever have like a, a production shutdown because we don't have enough water. So. And uh, these are the guys that built it. And I, I wanted to put this slide up here because um, a couple of things. One, it's, it shows how we can use the Tableau to focus on specific operational issues and, and uh, push it out through the organization. But also, um, to Rich's point of trying to you know, really uh, engage a business, these guys built this report very quickly with, with nominal experience with the tool. And you can see up here the, the head of maintenance for, for that plat product group um, was ecstatic. And so he called them out in terms of what they did very quickly uh, using Tableau. So um, we, we, we're working really hard as an organization to you know, collaborate with the business. And this is a really good example. And we've, started to build a lot of credibility by, by solving small problems and uh, it helps set the stage for us to get money to you know, build out the architecture and things like that. And then the last one I'm going to talk about is pretty cool. It's called trade intelligence and this is integrating external data um, like imports, exports, so uh, Department of Trade data that helps us understand where is steel coming in from different countries. And we use it for a couple purposes. One is to understand our market share, which products are selling where, um, and what's our market share of it, but also to identify, um, you know, do we think there's unfair trade practices going on because we're starting to see a, a shift in stuff coming in or, you know, we see a, a sudden blip in things like that. So this is very key. Um, one thing in, uh, to note, though, is actually uh, one of the data sources is, is providers is called Platts and they actually have an analysis services cube that they host and they've given us direct access as a, like a beta partner so we can go right against their cube using Tableau and do analyses. But basically what this is showing here is um, kind of our, the imports from different countries and um, for a specific product group and the, the bar in the middle is the average over the last 12 months and so I can see this month's number versus the average, so I can see how he's kind of tracking the average or is it a big jump. Um, and then the month change is on the right side, percent change month to month. Um, and then we're also bringing this data in and we're integrating with our internal data to understand our market share for all these different products. And uh, this is an example where um, using a product like Tableau can give you access to information quickly, but at the same time, you get a lot more value as you start to integrate other data. So if we look at um, our internal sales, Part of what's going to make the solution really effective is we're putting uh, harmonized tariff codes, standardized codes for each of our products, which is how the imports come in. And now we're able to roll up and map our products to a specific uh, tariff code. So um, I think that's all we had in terms of uh, what we're going to talk about. I don't know if you guys have any questions. We're glad to entertain them.
described was that the, there was too many applications for all. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you using specific tools to pull and push that data, or is it all direct, direct integrations? Okay, so the, the question was, with all these data sources we have, what tools are we using to do the integration, correct? Uh, right now we use SSIS, SQL Server Integration Services, as our ETL tool, and we're moving into a SQL Server data, data warehouse. Um, we're, we're looking at potentially bringing in a tool like Composite or Denota, which is a virtualization layer that would give us kind of a, uh, a master data, a metadata layer um, that we could leverage. But right now we use SQL Server Integration Services because we have it, the skill set in it. So. Any other questions? We're, we're also undertaking a uh, ERP standardization project, uh, and that's a journey, as anyone that's been through it knows. But uh, that will set the framework for more standardization across the organization, and that heat map that you, sh you saw will gradually go away over the next three years. But today, as Dave said, uh, it, it's you know customized interfaces. Next year, we're, we're going to fund. Uh, more of a uh, 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 an interface type software, you know, to help so that we get out of the interface writing business. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll give this guy a chance first. Um, I saw on one slide uh, there was the term "bring in analytics," and I was wondering, as you um, focus on quality, do you do you have any projects going on? Like early warnings or data detection predictions? Is this a new Yeah, so right now. Um, Repeat the question. Oh, so the question was um, he saw predictive, predictive analytics on one of our slides. And the question is where in our roadmap is predictive analytics in terms of uh, identifying quality issues and being proactive, correct? Um, it's, it's on our roadmap. It's not um, the short term. I think we want to you know, walk before we run. And so a lot of um, predictive analytics is dependent on you know, quality data, right? So we're kind of focusing on our quality data right now. Uh, the goal will be you know, maybe in the next year or so start to get to the point where we're actually um, automating some alerts to, to identify when we need to do maintenance. But I think in the short term, it's going to be more um, getting the data in order and, and doing analysis on the data sets manually. But at some point, ideally, right, we're we're uh, identifying where a part might fail. That's going to shut down a production line, and we're, you know, next time we have scheduled down outage, we'll fix, replace that part, and things like that. But yeah, so, what, so you know, as our, as you can see, our strategy is get those quick wins, get the business on our side. So there's certainly opportunity for tools like Splunk or, or setting up Hadoop stores and doing some more predictive analytics, if you will, and finding those gems. Um, Technology is uh, not well understood by uh, a lot of people that work in the steel industry uh, and, and in manufacturing in general. So a lot of this stuff is new, and so we got, we're building up that trust. Uh, we actually tried to move fairly quickly into the Hadoop space, and uh, it's way too confusing for the, um, uh, for the folks in the mill to grasp, okay? So we're going to kind of bring them along. Maybe we'll get into it a little bit more next year. Uh, but for sure the following year, okay? You know, I'll add to that, you know, we have a fairly small IT team that's really, they haven't been doing BI or, you know, analytics for a long time. So we're also trying to control the number of different tools we bring in-house because we only support so many. So uh, I'll give this guy a question and I'll come back to you, all right? Mine had to do with uh, machine data. So are you guys measuring machines now and, and uh, is that part of the, one of the data stores that that well? Yeah, so right now we are, um, we're getting sensor data, but it's uh, sample data. So it's every four to five seconds. It's not, you know, the millisecond or, you know, 10, 10 readings per second that ultimately we'd like to get to that might be more useful for, you know, predicting conditions. Um, but right now um, we're bringing sample data in, in through the warehouse. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're pulling from the level one and level two, you know, system from the PLCs. Uh, and like, for example, you know, the ladle uh, dashboard that you saw, that's coming right off the PLCs. All right, so, uh, you know, so we're getting the machine data, but today's point, we're not doing is consolidating it into a standard data store so we can look at, uh, 
analytics that we could share rather than everybody having to reinvent the wheel. Today we're kind of siloed with our quality data warehouses as well as our level one and level two databases. Uh, but you know, that, like I said, I think we'll be getting closer to that towards the end of next year, but for sure in 2016. Okay. Nah. Do you have a question? Yeah. Makes sense that you have this, uh... We actually collect a lot of data right now. It's just all in different systems. And so we haven't, as an organization, made the effort to start to consolidate. And we actually have some pro projects in process now to do that. But um, we're also looking at standardizing it as well, like bringing Wonderware in and, and making that a standard. Because right now, uh, you know, different plants have different systems for collecting that data. So, but any other questions? With an Evraz? Um, so I'll, I'll take that one. So yeah. what, the question is, what was our biggest struggle? <laughs> um, All right. All right. He doesn't me. I can answer one. <laughs> uh, what right. was our biggest struggle? Bailey getting the BI group going, right? Well, honestly, it was all about building trust. All right. So uh, you know, I ju you know, I think you know, the problem with a lot of IT organizations is they don't get out and understand the business. All right, I go to the mill, I'm at the mill three weeks out of the month, all right? And you have to get out there and start solving people's problems. We didn't have a BI group when I got here, all right? And once, it was very obvious the problem we had, and so, you know, you gotta, be, again, I'm the sales guy. I gotta sell the business on where do you need to make investments, all right? What was great about Tableau was, I wasn't asking for $4 million to build a big data warehouse or OBIE or something like that. Right, with tons of process change and, and you know, months and months of, of, of meetings and discussions and such. No, I said, look, let's solve some immediate problems. And people had those, right? So they were like, hey, you know, this report, you know, Dave showed you the iceberg. Well, it was, it, was, it was taking them a week to do this. Now we can do it in 10 minutes, all right? So it was really, you know, that was really, the business was ready for it. I mean, there were some senior leaders who were like, hey, you know, data warehouse. You know, I don't know that we're ready for that. Okay, well, you know, we're going to start small, all right? And uh, once some people got some quick wins, I mean, and, and I kind of explained that early. Once, honestly, once the shop floor was in it, because, you know, when I go out to the mill, I go out to dinner all the time with the guy that runs the mill, and I bring my IT guys with me, all right? So, you know, I'm asking them, what are your problems? Now, so, you know, so, like, we're moving into the ERP realm. Well, i got to have their support, all right? So, I, you know, first thing I do is I give them something, and then I asked for their support. So that's really, you know, how we've driven this along. Yeah. And uh, so far, so good. Yeah, but. yeah. it's not, you know, IT, BI is not a technical endeavor, right? I've, I've never, the projects seldom fail, be, fail because of technology. It's always because we're not solving the right problem and we don't have the right people involved. And that's probably, uh, to Rich's point, you know, we're focused on getting people engaged. Agree. I couldn't agree more. I mean, you know, uh, you got to deliver value every week, right? And so the sooner, the more value you can cram into 90 days, right, the, the more credibility you're going to have. So, you know, this is a great tool for doing that. And, uh, you know, and I would encourage you to start small, yeah. right? Get those point solutions, right? Uh, you know, the Lado project was, it was a great project because that totally affects quality if we're not mixing the, the recipe correctly, all right? And so, you know, we had some, so we had some uh, new mixers in. They weren't working as, as effective. You know, the guys in the lab were doing the testing. Again, further downstream, I got to wait till the guys do the test. I had to make some product to say, hey, this mix isn't right, all right? I already made some steel. Now I'm getting it up front. 
All business habitat, all those opportunities, you're not going to get them, you're not going to find them unless you get out to your plant and walk the floor, right? Do, your, do a tour, right? I don't care how many times you do a tour. If you go out there, I, go, I try to go every time I go out there, or at least once a quarter to each of the mills, because somebody won't be there the day you're going through, and you'll happen to run into them that day, and they'll be like, and you'll, be, you'll see them doing something, and you'll be like, what are you doing? And then they'll tell you, and it's like, you like doing it that way? No, how long have you been doing it that way? Oh, I don't know, like 10 years. Okay, well, we can help you. And those are big wins, right? Because, you know, you got all the, you know, mills typically have people that have been there. I mean, I'm like the youngest guy when I go out to the mills, okay? We have a very aged staff. I'm the youngest so, guy. Right, well, you're young. <laughs> <laughs> you're quite far. So, but, you know, but the point is, they all know each other, been doing stuff the yeah. same way, but one day now, you turn them, and they're like, hey, these guys are giving us some good stuff. They all come along because they all trust each other. And then, you know, when you get in that, when you get uh, brought into that realm of confidence, now you're going to get some funding. So yeah. uh, that's. And a, yeah, a lot of my job is, uh, you know, I used to do pre-sales years ago. And uh, that's a lot of my job, right? Selling, selling what we're doing and getting, uh, you know, selling the small wins so we can get funding for the bigger things, right? And uh, once, but you have to have, the small wins, and then, then you can talk to people about, you know, to go to the next level, here's what it's going to cost, but you need those, the small wins, so. Do you find you're adding value by, you know, showing them new ways that they should be looking at the business, or are you going out and saying, giving them an easier way to see what it is they already know they want? I think it's both. I think it's both. Um, you know, they know the business better than I, I ever will, but I'm pretty good at like how you display data and, and, and also think about integration and things like that. So I think the value is a, a exposed to data they have so they can look at it better, but then also um, starting to ask the questions about, you know, if you had this, this, and this. Would that be valuable? And so sometimes when you, when you throw things out there, like, oh, I never thought about that way, that's good. So it's kind of a, I guess it's kind of symbiotic, you know? Um, yeah, it's a dance. We're both partners, yeah. right? They know the business. We're, we've got some technology tools that can help. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, so when we tried to move too fast into Hadoop, they just, they weren't, they weren't, they couldn't get there, all right? So, uh, so we, yeah. we scaled it back, gave them something that they can use. And at today's point, you know, what, what we do is we coach them on, Hey, maybe there's a better way to do it, right? And once you again, once you're in that level of confidence with them uh, and trust, you know, then they'll they'll take your your input and, and start looking at things differently. So yeah, yeah. And it's a lot of visibility yeah. on this stuff. I mean, honestly, yeah. the, the, all these dashboards are are are. You go yeah. in executive meetings, our dashboards are in there. You go to quality meetings, our dashboards are in there. So we've got a lot of momentum, and uh, you know, we're just yeah. trying to bring. The organization along at a pace that they can digest, uh, so don't, they don't get yeah. overwhelmed. And frankly, we don't want to overcommit, right? Because then once you get to a point where you're no longer delivering, it'll be back like when I started, where IT is slow, and we don't want to give you an ass by. And it's it's a little bit of an evolution too, because initially, I mean, we're the tail wagging the dog, and we're, we're, IT is driving it, which is not really the ideal thing. Um, but and we can look, look at the projects we've done over the last year, and with each project. Uh, we get a little better at actually engaging the business and then being more, um, I guess, collaborative. So, it, but it takes time, right? You have to kind of work your way up. So, and is it over? You had a question? Yeah. Uh, so, you guys would have, have a lot of people, you know, manipulating Excel, and then uh, you converted a lot of this process to the now but probably there are lots of people that are still. We're really early in the process. I mean, there's so much. Rich says, you know, we have a lifetime of work here, right? Um, so we're, we basically um, we help people who want to help themselves, right? So there's enough people, there's enough work to do that we can be a little bit selective in terms of where we focus, and we try to focus on areas where we're going to get engagement, be successful. And so if someone's resistant, you know, like inventory, we had 
two groups out of three were really on board, we focused on that, right? Get those wins first, and then uh, there's enough work to do that we don't have to, uh, you know, can't go to the ocean. So. Yeah, I, to be honest, we're not really having much resistance. I get more resistance probably with the senior leadership because, you know, uh, they, don't, they don't believe in IT, some of them. <laughs> but, uh, but you save two hours out of somebody's week with Tableau, they're a believer. Right, and they've been working there 15 years. You just gave them two hours; yeah. they're pretty happy. Yeah. So that's again, we're we're getting a lot of wins like that. So let's get, get this guy a question. You don't mind sharing how many desktop devices have you purchased? Right now, we're at 40. Um, server. We have one server right now. Eight core. Um, you know, I should know, but I don't. I think it's eight core. Yeah. So. User. What's that? Our server? Yes. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's right. We have 40. We have 40. Uh, well, we will as soon as we get the PO, right? We'll have 40 interactor and 40 desktop. So, but we, we are now getting end users asking us for desktop licenses. So, that's good. So, if you're 40 desktop. Oh. No. Is that it? Um, we don't let everyone publish, so some are end users and others are um, will we'll publish. Um, we tried that; it didn't go so well. It was not; it was a change management nightmare. Yeah. So we we already made that mistake. So. You said you had some integration with the PLC and like the label. Did you see that? I think you're, you're getting. What's the question? Can you repeat that? I think you're getting beyond my expertise in manufacturing. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're, you know, uh, so we're not replacing, you know, like the Rockwell type systems that are on the shop floor, but we're taking data from those to make decisions and create dashboards. So, you know, I mean, it's, you got the engineering guys have tools that they've used for years. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're just starting this dance, if you will, to figure out where does it make sense? Are there better ways we could use Tableau rather than using some of the interfaces there and feed it directly from the PLCs? Um, we're not there yet, yeah. and uh, yeah. it'll be probably a while before we get there because it's a big change. You know, the, the 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 mills are you know they have their own engineering group, they have their own tools, and that, and uh, you know, kind of have to really build some trust for them to say, yeah, you can come in and, and make some changes uh, in my production area. Yeah, and you know, we're not trying to be all things to all people. So if some of the, you know, if so, some of these systems have decent reporting and they serve their purposes, you know, that's not really like a high priority for us right now. I think that the, the, the greater value is um, as we start to bring in that data and integrate it, right? And then that, that's where there's more value. So we're not trying to um, necessarily replace reporting that might come out of a system right now. Does that answer your question? Or, yeah, so. I Yeah. I, mean, I think I, when we get to big data and we start uh, consolidating data on Hadoop, the, 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 the analytics will be so impressive that you'll see significant changes in the way these type of tools are used in a manufacturing environment. But, you know, we're about a year away from that. Yeah. So. If you guys aren't familiar with Splunk, I'd tell you definitely go look at it. There's some cool stories around that stuff. So, pretty neat. All right. So, yeah, no, so we don't, we don't, uh, we just keep the data flowing basically, right? So we let the business, we provide the business the information they need to do the analysis. So, um, we couldn't possibly troubleshoot quality yeah. issues in a steel mill, right? <laughs> it's a whole different skill set. Yeah. So, you know, 
Uh, no, we're, we're providing the data and the reports, and ideally we just want to provide the data. We want them to build the reports, but you know, we'll build the reports for now. Uh, but yeah, we're building the tools they use to run their, their part of the business. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then they tell us if they need enhancements or they need you know, some more data. Because you know, as, as they get some data they can act, take action on, now they're like, all right, wouldn't be nice to have this. And you know, so it will we'll continue to be fine-tuned. Ideally, we want to make, you know, have Tableau experts and power users in each of the various functions. All right, and that's why we established that Tableau users group so they could come in and get some help uh, internally as opposed to, you know, keep adding more people in the IT department. That's not our goal. Yeah. We want to be good at delivering data and let them be good at managing a business. So, I think probably our last question, huh? Is that? So, have you ever done um, any ROI analysis on implementing Tableau? Um, no. I, I, I don't know that. I don't think I've done that. Where we are. Have you ever done analysis like uh, the improvement on quality or yield? Yeah, you know, it, I think we're at a point where the the the, uh, the challenges of getting the data are so blatantly obvious that we don't really necessarily have to do a, a, a big ROI. You know, we're not we're not and we're not spending a lot of money either, yeah. right? So, and some of these things are. Um, you know, what's the, the cost of preventing one defect, right? It's a lot more than we're spending probably in a year. Um, same thing if uh, we identify a trade case, you know, it's such a huge payback that I don't know that we, you know, no one's really asking for a detailed we, I, ROI I, at this I, point I, Again, time. the investment has just not been that significant. Yeah. I mean, even with the consulting and that we're doing for the impact we're having. Yeah. Could we build one? I haven't thought about doing it, but yeah, I think it would be pretty easy uh, to do that. Yeah. I mean, uh, how do you quantify making better decisions, right? right. It's tough, but uh, that's what the business is seeing. So, yeah. uh, and as we get in the quality system, yeah, we could, you could probably quantify, you know, where you've caught a defect sooner rather than later, right, within the process yeah. and, uh, and put a number behind that. So it's, it's definitely feasible. Yeah. And, we, and we've made a conscious decision not to do like the whole the big bang approach to bring in, building a data warehouse, right? So um, we could have we could have gone and asked for five or ten million dollars to build an enterprise warehouse over two years, but you know we'd get three million three million into it and it would just die because you know it takes it's too much work. So we made a conscious effort to you know like I said always add value and, and, and do incremental stuff that's that's really valuable. So we're definitely like in a low hanging fruit kind of environment still so all right well thank you if david and i are around if you have any other questions and uh, appreciate your time tonight yeah thanks a lot good questions too